Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answer Set Solving in Practice. I am Javier Romero and here we are going to do the exercise on No Goods from Logic programs of the solving part of the course. In this exercise we are given a normal logic program P and we have to find the completion no goods, the loop no goods and the solutions for the completion and the loop no goods. So first Let's go and have a look at the slides that are relevant for this exercise. We start in this slide 341 about the characterization of stable models in terms of the solutions to a set of no goods. So we have that letting P be a logic program, X is a stable model of P if and only if for a unique solution A for the completion and the loop no goods of P, the true atoms of A coincide with X. Good, so this works in general for logic programs, but when P is tight, we can get rid of the loop no goods. We don't need them. Nice, then here, these are the new concepts of the solving parts. What is a solution? What are the completion no goods? And what are the loop no goods? So let's just go now very quickly to those slides. Here we have the definition of what is a solution for a set of nodes. So this is an assignment that is total. This is what is specified by these two conditions. And it's total and it is such that for all the nodes in the set, the nodes are not a subset of the assignment. So the nodes are not contained in the assignment. Good, now about the completion nodes, we have the body-oriented ones. So if we have such a body B, then this yields these no goods, and it also yields these no goods in this slide 332. These are the body oriented. Now, for the atom oriented, they are specified in this slide 333. So, if we have an atom A who's, that occurs in these rules, whose bodies are B1 to Bn, then these are the no goods that yield the atom oriented no goods for this atom A. And now we only have to go quickly to the slides where loop no goods are specified. And it's this one, 339, where we have that for a logic program P and a subset U of the atoms of the program, the loop no good of an atom A, is, which is written like this, is this no good here that tells us that it cannot be the case that A is true and that all these bodies are false. And these bodies, B1 to Bk, are the external bodies of U for P. Good, so this was very quick. The idea is that now, if you want, you can review these slides and you can watch the video where Tostan explained this. And in, okay, I also I wanted to tell you, I put the video below in the, the, the video where Tostan explains this below in the description. Nice, so let's go to do the exercise. Here we have the program P with these three rules. And I have already written here the completion nodes. But before we go to that, let's just clarify a bit the notation. We will have variables representing the bodies. And for this body here, the variable will be represented by the set of atoms in the body. And similarly here, we will represent the body that stands sorry, the variable that stands for this body with this set notation. And here what may look a bit strange at the first place is that there's an empty body in the in, in this rule, and this is simply represented with the empty set, as should be natural for everybody. Nice. Then let's go to the completion no goods. Then here I have written the atom-oriented and on the other side the body-oriented. And for the atom oriented, I will go atom by atom, first A, then B, then C, and then D. And first I write the atom oriented no good where A is true, then where A is false, and so on for the others. And then we will look a bit more carefully to this case. And similarly for the body oriented, we go body after body. First, and write in the no good where the body is true and those where the body is false. Similarly, where the body is true, and then where the body is false. And again, this is a special case that we will look a bit more in detail. 
Nice. Then let's move to here, atom oriented. We look for the atom oriented nodes where A is true, and it is just this one. It cannot be the case that A is true, and the unique body that leads to A is false. And for false A, we have that it cannot be the case that A is false, and the body that could give us A is true. Then for B, there's no rule with B in the head. So then it's natural that we have this no good that tells us it cannot be the case that B is true because B can only be false in a stable model, right? Because there's no way that we could prove it. Then also now so that you are sure that this, is, this agrees with the definition that we have in the slides, let's go quickly to them. So here we have that if these are the rules whose head is A with bodies B1 to Bn, then we have all this no good for A. Now, if we do not have this rule, then basically we get rid of all these no goods and this no good becomes simplified so that we just have these two. The first one saying that it cannot be the case that A is false and B1 is true. And the second one saying that it cannot be the case that A is true and B1 is false. And now what happens is we get rid of this one, of the rule with B1 in the body, then the no good for B1 in the body disappears, hence we don't get any no good from this part. And here, in the same way as here, we had deleted all these bodies, we have to delete B1, and hence we are left just with the no good that says it cannot be the case that A is true, which is exactly what we had here, but for atom B instead of A. Nice. Then we can move on to C, and we have that it cannot be the case that C is true, and its unique body, not B, not D, is false. And for false C, we have that it cannot be the case that C is false, and that the body of the rule that leads to C is true. And similarly, for D, we have that it cannot be the case that D is true, and that the unique body that leads to it is false, and we cannot be the case that D is false, and that a body that leads to D is true. Now, what happens with this program is that there is no atom that occurs in the head of more than one rule. So let's modify the example so that we have another rule for D that says D if not B, for example. And let's see how would this no goods be. Now, so all this would remain the same, but for D, this would no longer be a no good. The no good would look like this. We have to delete this part here, and we say that we add this false of the body with not B here, because what we want to say is that it cannot be the case that D is true, and that the two bodies that could give us D are false. So reading it another way, if all of these are false, then it cannot be the case that D is true, right? D has to be false. And this would still remain because this represents that it cannot be the case that the body is true, but the head is false. But we would have to add this one saying that it can also not be the case that D is false when this body with not B is true, right? Nice. So here I just wanted to show you what would happen if the program was a bit more involved with more than one rule for some atom. Now let me just erase all of this so that we are with the program of the exercise. And let's consider now the atom orient sorry, body oriented no goods. We start with this one and in we just get this no good. And first let's have a look at it intuitively. This makes real sense because what we want to say is that it cannot be the case that the antibody is false. The empty this body always holds, it's always true, so it cannot be the case that it is false. And in fact, if we go here to the definitions of the no-goods that we obtain from the body-oriented no-goods, we see that this makes sense, this agrees with the definition that we have here. So for this body B, we get all these no-goods, 
Now, if we get if the body is simpler and we just have one atom, then we would only get one atom. And if we also get rid of this because the body is atom, then sorry, the body is empty, then we wouldn't have any no good from this part. And from <coughs> this part, again, we can apply the same reasoning. It's clear that if we didn't have these atoms in the no good, sorry, in the body, then we would be left simply with the no good that says that it cannot be the case that the body is false and that A1 is true. But now if we say, okay, but A1 also does not occur there, so we should also delete it from there, and then we are left with the no good that tells us it cannot be the case that B is false, which is exactly what we got here, where the body is the empty set. Nice. So now for the body not B, not D, we have that it cannot be the case that the body is true, but B is also true, right? If it's true, we expect that it has to be the case that B is false. And similarly for the D, it cannot be the case that the body is true, but D is also true. And the no good where the body is false is like this. It cannot be the case that the no good that the body is false, but B is false and D is false. And you can read it also going from the other direction. It cannot be the case that B is false and D is false, and that the body is also false. Nice, and this is easy now for, for the body with A and not C. It cannot be the case that A and not C is true and A is false, and similarly for C being true there. And then it cannot be the case that the body is false, but A is true and C is false, right? Nice. So this is the first part of the exercise where we have built the completion no goods. So now let's move to the loop no goods. I have copied here the logic program, and then we can try to build the loop no goods. But before we start building them, we have to build the positive atom dependency graph. We have A, B, C, and D are the atoms. And here, this is the only positive literal in the body of a rule. So we only have this link from A to D that comes from that rule. And if we look at this graph, it's clear that it's a cyclic, so hence the program is tied. And then we know that we do not need the loop no good. I will write it here, that these are not needed. More formally, the stable models of this program correspond one to one to the solutions of the completion no goods. And adding the loop no goods to those completion no goods doesn't change the solutions. Hence, we could stop here and move to looking for the solutions of those completion nodes. But now that, now that we add this, we can also see an example why adding these loop nodes wouldn't bring anything. Then here in the definition of loop nodes, we, we see that it's defined for an atom A that belongs to a set U. And uh, we only need to add the loop nodes whenever this U corresponds to a loop in the logic program. And here we don't have loops, so it doesn't bring us anything if we add uh, uh, the loop no good for a set that is not a loop. But let's see what happens when we do it, and let's see why this is not useful. Let's consider the set CD. And then for this, we have the external bodies. Uh, these two, right? The two bodies for C and D, they don't use C or D. They do not contain C or D in the positive bodies. Hence, both belong to the external bodies of the atom. Then I, let's write here, not B, not D. And here, A, not C. Then the loop no good for C is simply this one. This parenthesis that says it cannot be the case that C is true and both bodies are false. And similarly, for D, we have 
that it cannot be the case that D is true and that both bodies are false. Then one could think, okay, let's add these two no goods to our set of completion no goods. But if we now look at the completion no goods that we have, we see that for this, we have this that is a subset, and for this, we have this that is a subset. Let me underline here these two that appears in this no good, and now these two that appear in this no good. So then given that these two are supersets of no goods that we already have, adding them then here doesn't bring us anything. Just let's think about an example. Let's see, we have, if we have, uh, if there is a solution for the completion of no goods, then no no good is violated. In, in particular, this no good is not violated, then this no good can also not be violated. So if we add it, we still have a solution. And now consider the other case where the, where <clears throat> An assignment is not a solution for the completion of no goods. If we add more no goods, of course, it will remain not being a solution. So this shows us that adding this loop no goods does not change the solution. Then again, this just uh, shows us that we do not need the loop no goods. And now we can move to finding the solutions of those no goods that correspond to the stable models of the program. Then back here, what we have to do is to find a total assignment, that is an assignment to all the atoms and all the bodies of the program, such that this assignment is not a superset of any of the completion nodes. Now, one naive way of doing this would be just to enumerate all possible total assignments and check whether they are superset or not of any of these nodes. But what we can do is do some simple reasoning and, um, and find those assignments in a bit, uh, in a better way. And you will see that this is similar to the way we have computed stable models in other exercises. And this is also similar to the way that Klingo works. And the nice thing is that you will see that the reasoning that we have to do is always the same and it's something very simple. Now that we have, in a way, reduced the complexity of the logic programs to these simple data structures that are the no-goods. So then we can start reasoning and say, we are going to, we have this no-good here that tells us that it cannot be the case that B is true. Then for an assignment, to be a solution, it cannot extend this, but it has to assign some value to B. So then B must be false. We know that if it's going to be a solution, it must have B false. And then we can say once B is false, this no good cannot be violated. And we can go and check here on the right side where this FB appears. So this FB appears here. So if these two appear in an assignment, then this no good would be violated. And we also have that this no good can no longer be violated by any assignment that extend this, extends this one because it has TB while we have TFB, so it cannot be a superset. Nice. Then <clears throat> what does we have here? This body-oriented no good tells us that it cannot be the case that the empty body is false. Then for an assignment to be a solution of these no goods, it must be the case that it assigns to the empty set true. Then in this case, this no good cannot be violated for, by any assignment that extends this one. And also this no good cannot be violated because we have true of the empty set. And now this can be violated. In fact, if we make A false, we will violate it. So we have to make A true. Otherwise, we would violate that no good. Now, with A true, this cannot be violated. Now we have to go to see in which other places we have the literals about A. So this no good 
has FA, so it can no longer be violated. And where is TA? TA, we have it here. So this node would, if these two appear in the assignment, would be violated. Nice. Now let's see if there's something else that we could try to deduce from this. And there's nothing else, I think. Now we have got this, um, this uh, sign literals. And if we go to the program now, we can see what have we done. So basically we have deduced that f that b is false because it does not occur in any rule. And then that the antibody is true because, uh, yeah, this is, this makes sense because there are no literals in it. And then given that this is true, that a also has to be true. And then nothing else can be deduced about this one. So here we know that B is false, but we don't know the value of this. So we don't know whether the body holds, and then we don't know whether C holds or not. And similarly here, we know the value of A, but this does not allow us to decide whether this body is true, and then similarly for D. So then now, this, it's not easy to see how to continue. Then we can reason by cases and say, okay, let's see what would happen with an assignment where we make, uh, for example, D false. And what would happen if we look for the assignment where D is true, right? And then we know that we are looking for all possible assignments because we know that this hold in all assignments. And now we will see these two options where D is false and D is true. And this way we are covering all possibilities. Now let's go through the left side. So if we have that D is false, then this no good could be violated here and this can no longer be violated. And then on the other side, on the right side, let's see where we have this D. So this D is here and this no good can no longer be violated. Then now that we know that D is false on this side of the tree, so to say, we have to make the body A not C false because otherwise this no good would be violated. And then this is no longer violated. Let's look at A not C. Then here, this is false. We can simplify it. So if C is made false, then this no good is violated. And uh, again, this cannot be violated because the body, we have made it false. Good. Now let's continue. So what else can we, can we say now? Yeah, this has to be true because otherwise the no good would be violated. So we say like this. And then with this, this no good is no longer violated. And let's see where does this appear. Okay, this appears here on the left side. So I simplify here and this can no longer be violated. Nice. And now with this, I think we have both this no good and this no good that force us to, to add that C is true to our assignment, and then this no good wouldn't be violated, and this wouldn't be violated. So now, if we look at this, we have assigned a truth value to all the literals, to, sorry, to all the possible atoms and bodies. And given that we have written all these lines here, it's nice because we know that no no good is violated at this point. And from here, it's, tri it's trivial to extract that A and C is a stable model of the program. And if we look at what have we been doing, so we guessed that D was false. And then once we guess that D is false, then we will ob we obtain that this body is false. And we also obtain that, uh, let me see if this body is false. We got here that this had to be true. And this was because, yeah, be okay, because D is false and B is false. So we also got that this body had to be true. And if this body was true, then we also had that T had to be true. And you see the nice thing here is that we have been 
working, instead of working with the complexity of the logic program, we work with the simplicity of the nodes, and then it's a straightforward to make all these deductions. And in fact, the deduction of all these literals, the inference of all these literals is called no good propagation. And we will see it again in the next exercise. And you can see this also in the slides, of course. Nice. Now let me, I think what I can do now is I stop the video, I clean this, and then we continue. Let's continue then. We have now this side where we assume that D is true. Then if D is true, this no good can no longer violate it. And now this one can be violated unless we make that body, that body true. And on the other side here, on the right side, this no good still can be violated and this no longer can be violated. Now we see we finish with the D and then we can see that we have to make this true because otherwise that no good would be violated. And once we have that assigned, this can no longer be violated. And then we come here to the right side. We delete it from that no good and we know here this cannot be violated. Then we can continue and say, for example, that this body must be false. Otherwise we violate that no good. Hence, now, once we add that body false, this cannot be violated. And here on the right side, we have to delete this here, and we know this no good can no longer be violated. And now I think it, what it happens is that we have these two no goods that tell us that C must be assigned to false, otherwise they would be violated. And now if we look at this assignment, we see that all atoms are bodies are assigned, and then we know that A and D are a stable model of the program. Yes, so these are the two stable models, A and D, and A and C. And again, let's go have a look at what we have done. First, we inferred all this, applying this unit propagation on the no goods, which basically boils down to this reasoning like say, that says, OK, I have to make this literal true or false, because otherwise the no good would be violated. And then here on this side, we saw what happened with this making this D true, and then we infer this again with this unit propagation. And uh, yes, and actually what happens in, in the solver is something similar to this. So first, the solver would propagate on this and then would make a choice. For example, it could make D true or, sorry, D false or D true. And then if it makes the false, it would come here and propagate and return this solution, right? And if it had made the decision on D true, it would find this solution first. And then uh, if you tell the solver to compute all models, then it would end up visiting the other branch of this tree, so to say. So hence, we can say that here, this is one solution, and this is another solution, and this corresponds to the two stable models of the program which I underline here, the atoms, uh, I'm sorry, A and D and uh, A and C on the other side. So that was all. I hope you enjoyed it, you understood it, and see you in another video. Ciao!